That was meant to be funny and someone's laughing. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, it's a little after we've got two commissioners that are not here. Uh, one is not on campus yet, so I think we need to go ahead and start. Do we know it's Commissioner Tyson is here? We have uh, Dr. Ray Watts is going to give a presentation this morning, and Commissioner uh, Ammons has asked to go first. There she is. Now we'll see. Uh, Commissioner Ammons has asked to go first, and Commissioner Tyson has asked to go second. So uh, the rest of our order will just follow our, our normal. Uh, we'd like to begin today's meeting as we do all the word of prayer and, and we need to remember that this is breast cancer awareness month and we need to wear our pink and we need to remember those that this terrible disease has touched. Uh, Othel, would you mind leading us off in a little prayer? Sure. Let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for many blessings that you've bestowed upon us each and every day, Lord. We have a great country, Lord. We have a great county, Lord. We thank you for those blessings you've given us to work with, Lord. We just uh, ask that you put a hedge of protection over our workers, Lord, over our city, our county, our state, and our nation, God. And everything that we say and we do will be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Commissioner uh, Allen, let's yes, begin with your. All right. Uh, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Ray Watts. Um, uh, UAB has been a, uh, um, a huge part of uh, Birmingham and Jefferson County and what it means for not only bio and life sciences, but for technology workforce development and a little bit of everything um, and it's, uh, it's a pleasure to have him here to tell us about how they're going to continue to be innovative and um, uh, and help with not only precision but personalized medicine so dr. Watts well it's a great pleasure to be here with you this morning I'm pleased to be joined by our Dean of Medicine and Senior Vice President for Medicine Selwyn Vickers and he and I are going to present to you what we think is one of the most important, if not the most important, economic development opportunities that Birmingham and Jefferson County is going to have in probably this decade. We've got some handouts for you. We've got a PowerPoint presentation. But we want to share with you about this exciting new project to build a genomic medicine and data sciences research building at UAP. It's a large project, $70 million construction project but it will give us a platform to continue to move into the top 20 in NIH funding and well into the top 10 among all public universities where we are now. But we want to do more. And this is going to be, this area of genomic and precision medicine is really going to be the foundation for the future of healthcare. And we are fortunately on the leading edge, but we need this facility to recruit others and to stay on the leading edge. So, would you like to start? Thank you, Ray, and thank you for giving Ray and I a chance to present. Um, and as Ray talked about, our aspirations are to continually actually grow our programs to not only impact um, the broader world, but really to be important for Birmingham. 
UAB under Ray's leadership, um, as well as with the School of Medicine, has put itself in a unique position uh, as both state schools go. We don't have a peer in the Southeast. Our peers are Vanderbilt, Emory, um, and Duke. And the only other state school that we really can count as a peer is University of North Carolina. But the difference between all of those schools is that they're all over 100 years old. UAB's 49. And so we're as big as they are, but we're half their, we're half their age. And so we've grown dramatically. But to stay at that level of preeminence, we have to continually add and develop both from around technology, but probably most importantly, recruitment of talent uh, to really grow our program. So a large part of our world is citizens of Birmingham, citizens of Jefferson County. A large part is the talent that we bring to Birmingham that allows us to be a nationally attractive and competitive space. So what we're gonna talk about today is both a bit of a presentation of what we're doing and then a request of where we wanna go. So this outline just talks about what UAB contributes now. And so we wanna frame this economically because sometimes we lose sight of that contribution. So economic impact, recent study done, Ray gave this in his state of the school address, 7.15 billion impact on nearly 64,000 jobs. We employ over 23,000 people directly, and one in 31 jobs are somehow related or tied to UAB. In addition, if you look at just a time increment for every dollar that the state <coughs> we get, if you would, our public funding, we return 25 back. In light of that, if it's time-driven, 595 million every month, 19 million every day, and 13,000 every minute. And that's our ROI to this community from the investment we get as a state school. Largely driven by the fact that if you look at our med school budget, it's probably 88% non-public dependent. So our, our med school budget only gets 12% from the state. So all that you see is dollars we've created either from our economic engine or clinical care or research dollars to have that occur. And yet we are appreciative of every dime we do get. <clears throat> so when you think about research in the state of Alabama, you think about the universities that actually make up the core of this state, whether that's Alabama, Auburn, South Alabama, Troy, um, and even this research <coughs> institute called Hudson Alpha. But in reality, the, the, the truth of the matter is there's only one research intensive university in the state of Alabama, and that's UAB. Uh, and I use the term research intensive. They all do research, and they do that well. But if you look at the magnitude of what we're talking about, Southern Research, which is a part of us, and then you look at Hudson Alpha, and you look at South Alabama, you actually can't put Auburn and Alabama on this scale because they wouldn't fit. So 240, probably close to 260 million now in NIH funding dollars. These are dollars that are brought to the state that wouldn't be here without UAB scientists. In comparison, obviously you could combine every other research institution in the state of Alabama and they would be half the size of UAB. So precision medicine, and, and that's been a focus and that's what this request is about. It's really taking the information we have and using our ability now to be terribly accurate and targeted. The advent of precision medicine has come about because of the complete sequencing of the human genome. And since that time, we've been working to understand how these genes make specific proteins that lead to or affect disease. And we certainly look at that hard around cancer, we look at that around genetic inherited diseases, and we're now beginning to look at that around chronic diseases. One of the things that Ray and I sponsored and our state supports, we're one of the only states in the country where there is a statewide precision medicine program. So the Alabama Genome Health Initiative, and hopefully many of you had this done, have had their genome sequenced. And we give you the information back, whether you have an inherited disease, whether it's related to breast cancer, cardiovascular disease, or colon cancer, and probably around, maximum around 3% of the population will be told you have this gene and it's important that you see your physician and you also important that you talk to a genetic counselor, which we provide, because this gene will be passed on to your children. So that we do, and we've done and sequenced patients from every county in the state. The state supports us doing that. That now has allowed us to give that data back. And now we're advancing that. There's something called polygenic risk scores that when we sequence your genome, a couple things that can happen. 
we will evolve in understanding where we know mutations and defects occur. And so if we have your genome on record, we will be able to hopefully inform you in the future when something new is discovered. In addition, we can use your genome now through mathematical <coughs> modeling to predict your risk of cardiovascular disease, predict your risk of memory loss, predict your, predict your risk of diabetes, to predict your risk of renal failure. All of those are conversations that your internal medicine doctor can begin to have with you if you had your genome sequenced. So this is the building that we want to have forward. And we've already gotten the buy-in from one of our major contributors in this region, the Seisinger family. And this building is going to be in the center of UAB's campus. Uh, it actually will house a number of important things. And probably along with precision medicine, what I described to you was not so much about the sequencing. What I described to you was actually how you manage the data, right? So the most powerful thing that we will be doing as anything is probably managing data. 90% of the data in medicine, and currently in medicine, has been created in the last two years. That's just how much explosion is going on around medical information and data. So this building will allow scientists, but will be largely one where we will drive data and information along the genome. It will have our Hugh Call Precision Medicine Institute, precision medicine investigators, genomic investigators, those who will manage data, data scientists and informaticians. It will have a home for our faculty, particularly for recruiting new faculty, as well as some of our office functions to support our research programs. This is what it looks like in general terms. It's 140,000 square foot, so it's close to being one of the biggest buildings on our campus. Um, it will house anywhere from 50 to 75 companies. Each investigator is about a million dollar company. And in that company, they typically will have anywhere from five to 10 employees who are making 50 to $75,000 each. That's a company that wouldn't come if we don't put the talent in. They wouldn't be in Birmingham. And most of the talent has to be brought here. There's some that we bring here, but it's all talent being brought in. And those will be those who will comprise the jobs, so three to four, three or four hundred jobs in these 75 companies, annual revenue of 35 to 55 million, five-year projection of nearly 300 million if we're successful in getting the building up, and we have been successful in recruiting. Those dollars, for every dollar we put in to bring a recruit, we have to create a set of dollars, almost 50 cents to sustain them. So what UAB is today, it really is a large part of us making sure we generate the revenue, but also making sure we get support from you to allow us to actually execute on some of these dreams and visions. So total cost of the building is 70 million. We're making a one-time request of a million dollars a year times five years from the county. Who's, who have we asked to contribute thus far? We've met, Ray and I have spent uh, two meetings with governors, but most recently with our current governor, who's given us um, as much as any governor can an assurance that she supports this and would be hopefully in the fall and the early of next year being able to support it to what we've asked of $50 million for this building. In general, um, that 50, we've asked, we, we know we now have 10 million uh, philanthropy that's already pledged, that's being given now. And then we're asking the city and county for an equal amount of a million a year to build the building, which would be a large part of building. And then we would obviously find the dollars to bring the talent and the researchers in. So this is where it sits. So um, this is um, this is shine. The, the yellow building to the north is Old Jefferson Towers. Uh, the dental school, as you can see right there. And then uh, the building goes across the street. And if you stand it up on its, on, its, on its sort of hind side, it'd be taller as tall as our Shelby Research Building. So it's laid flat, but it is really a large space. And it sits iconically right in the middle of our campus. This is what it would look like by design. It would have a double <coughs> helix on the window uh, on uh, both sides. This is a night view. And you can see the stairway that's sort of made in a helix as well. And this is what it would look like in the day from the other side of the building. Another night view. And, and we think not only will it be a really iconic space in our city and in our campus, it will be a place where people want to come and work. We want to make it an attractive spot where people will actually 
want to be working in this building and we will be able to recruit them here. And this is sort of a long view of it with the VA on this side, the University Hospital on the other side. Thank you. I'll stop with that. In your packages, in your package, rather, you have a couple things. You'll have a sort of a five-year look back at how the School of Medicine has grown in the context of our larger university and the context of schools in the country. In addition, you'll have a more detailed picture of outlining the building, its specs, and the funding sources. And then you'll have a copy of my presentation. Thank you. Questions? Do you guys have any questions? The, the Human Genome Project, 1990 to 2003, is, will this kind of just pick up from there and continue to go? I mean, what's... This is taking that to every person that we take care of. That Human Genome Project, we can now sequence the genome in a couple of hours for about $1,000. Really? And so we have a lot of that ability. The real brains come in and analyzing the data. That's why the data science is, is so important. And you've got to be able to use large data sets like this. We saw over a million patients last year. And as we move forward, all of them are in our electronic health record. It won't be long until our genome is in that health record too. And we'll use all of that information to help predict disease and to help diagnose disease and specifically to develop a targeted molecular therapy to cure diseases like breast cancer and other serious illnesses. Yes, and as it relates to the Human Genome Project, we are, we're one of the national centers. So I mentioned the Alabama Genome Initiatives. That's something we started at UAB um, with Hudson Alpha, but UAB the lead that we sort of led the country in. Now, the Human Genome Project, we are one of the competing centers, so that's about a $2 million investment from our state. Well, that led to a $60 million grant right, that we now have at UAB. So that's just an example of the money that comes to, the, to Birmingham. And we're now the leading center in the country for recruiting people getting their genome sequenced. The, the attraction we have is that um, we, we both are a great institution, but we, we have a population that mirrors America. We have a diverse population. So when they look and say, how do we make sure we get enough African Americans? How do we get whites? How do we get Latinos? UAB in Birmingham is a place where that occurs more so than any place else in the country. And that grant that Sal was referring to is called All of Us, funded by the NIH. Right. It's going to study and sequence a genome of a million Americans. And we are the main coordinating site for the South, in part because we had already started the Alabama Genome Health Initiative, which we're in third year of, and we pledged and are on track to sequence 10,000 10,000 Alabamians' genome from every county over the five years that we're working through. And we're about halfway, and we're really making tremendous progress. That's why we got this. $60 million grant. And, and what that does is that it makes Alabama, both from its rural counties, Winston, Lowes, um, Macon, Jefferson, it makes those counties precision medicine ready because they have a platform where that information can return back to physicians and their patients in the both urban and the most rural areas where we can want to treat and make a difference in disease. Yes, ma'am. So I have uh, several questions. Good morning. Good morning. I, I remember you, um, sir, from when I was in Leadership Birmingham, and I um, appreciate your presentation this morning and would like to have a little bit more dialogue with you. So I want to preface this by saying this has nothing to do with the quality of what you all are, are offering this morning. I do have a question for you, John Henry. So if we were to consider this item, Yes, ma'am. What would be the funding source? If, if, if UAB, and they are, asking for $1 million in support, what would be the funding source? I can answer that question because there's, they are making an ask this morning, and it's, I will come around to each commission office to have that conversation, and that it would um, come out of the Economic Development Fund is okay. what, I would, what I would recommend because it is an economic uh, driver. Okay. Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. Okay. 
So you're, you're saying that the economic development dollars is what you would be looking for this project to come out of, is that correct? That's That would be my recommendation. That would be but your I'm going recommendation. To come to each, each one of the commission offices to have a conversation about okay. what, what's been. I wanted them to present before I came to each office so we had time to digest. If there are further questions, then we can come back to them and ask for the questions. Okay, sure. so <clears throat> that being said, and I'm your vice chair and didn't know anything about this project. So I wanted them to come and present. I'm your vice chair of this same economic development committee not a name only and this and this and this is my first time hearing about this project which is why I'm asking I'm gonna redirect the question again back to you John Henry as it relates to not the funding source what is the county as it relates to this stadium tell me one more time just as a refresher course what is the what is the county's commitment and for what is the extension of this as relates to this new stadium? The county entered into a funding agreement with the Birmingham Jefferson uh, County uh, Arena. We are committed to a million a year for 30 years. Okay. So as relates to the health care authority, I know that that item is going to be coming before us as well. Um, have we had a closer look, Mr. Jackson, in terms of are we pledging all dollars for indigent care fund to this health care authority? Well, when you mean all dollars, you mean all of the money that's every, generated every, through every indigent Every dollar care fund? that is in indigent care fund, are we pledging that to this UAB health care authority? All, all of the indigent care fund dollars that are generated are pledged to indigent care and is provided through whatever providers uh, has a, a role in providing that care to our indigent patients. Okay, I'm talking about the health care authority. I'm not making it hard, Mr. Jackson. I understand. Okay, I'm but making it really simple, stupid. I just want to know. Commissioner. Hold, we, hold on. Well, don't, I'm, don't. I'm saying we have, we have these gentlemen that have come. To and I'm day. asking because overall they're asking for money. And, and, and I'm trying to and get that's an for understanding us to that's in for us terms to of later. No, while, we're, while we have them here, can we just ask the questions? No, the I'm going to ask the questions because it's a waste later. of their time. If they ultimately need our financial support, then it would be prudent for us to have a conversation while they're present. That's why I'm asking. Okay. Now, what you won't do, <clears throat> Commissioner, you won't try to tell me how to ask a question. Now, if you don't want to answer it in this public setting when you're dealing with public dollars, then that's a problem. But what I will do, have this come up again. We, when, when we it have it to come up again, then what I will do, then what I will do, before it comes to the commission for a vote, I want to ask that question because it matters. And we need to know financially where we are and what we're indebted to already as it pertains to anything related to a new project. Okay, okay? so it, it just because you're over economic development does not mean that the project doesn't have merit. I'm asking how do you sustain the five-year agreement? And I meant what I said. We do know, I mean, we don't have to play games with it. Uh, we, the county has uh, voted to partner with UAB for this health care authority and I wanted to know where the dollars are going. If, if we have an indigent care fund, and we do, then I wanted to know how much of that is going toward this health care authority. And I know that we haven't voted on it in its totality, but we're in the framework, so I think this would be the proper time. And Mr. Uh, Chairman, I'm going to cease at that, but there's no disrespect to your presentation or the project. Let me be on the record, it's clear. So if you ever want to know how I feel, and, and Mr. Watts, when you get the opportunity, I still like to talk with you. Uh, I, I am interested in knowing whatever we do for one, we need to do for all. And I am asking these questions because all of them are relative or related to UAB. All right? And we'll work with John Henry and the finance chair. Uh, I, have, yeah. I have a question. What, what's your timeline on this project, the building, and get it up and running? We've been working on this project for how many years, so? At least three. Yeah, three years. Planning it and getting people in place. Uh, the folks we've recruited, Dr. Matthew Mike, who's the director of our Precision Medicine Institute, and others. 
So we are ready for a new, we're totally out of space. We haven't built a new research building since the Shelby building opened in about 2004. And that was on purpose, to use everything we've got to its full extent first. But this will be the first major project for the School of Medicine in 10 years. And it's going to be one of the most important for the next 10. And we're not asking you for a gift. We're asking you to make an investment alongside us and alongside the state and the city. And we're going to invest over $100 million over these next five years in recruiting the talent to be here and to be in our health system. Commissioner Tyson. Yes, I, I know about the program. I know several people that's involved in the study, but that don't mean that I feel like you should get five million dollars. Can you do this project without our five million dollars? Let me, the, the money is important from the county and the city to leverage the governor. The governor wants to know that our local government leaders are part of the project and are investing alongside with them. And we're going to invest more money than all of them put together over these next five years. We'd like to start building this project in the next 12 months. But we've been working on it. We've got it through our board. Our board has approved it through the final stage, which takes a year or two. And for the University of Alabama system and for UAB, this is the most important building project that we have. And it will transform. There is no company you can recruit to Birmingham or Jefferson County that's going to do what this does. And our fifth mission pillar after education, research, health care, community service is economic development. And this is going to be the driver of intellectual property and new discoveries that will become companies and products and so forth. And we want to lead the country and we need your partnership to do that. I know that you said it would bring jobs. I know that they, they, for regular people, they would probably be cleaning service jobs or something like that. Uh, and it might not be a living wage job. So a job isn't a job, uh, I feel like. And, uh, and you know, I've had several talks with you about UAB participating in the, uh, in the underserved communities in, in, the, in um, the city of Birmingham and Jefferson County. And we do not at the level that you should be. And that's a talk that we can have outside of this room because I don't really, uh, I don't know we don't have that kind of time. I'm going to send you some data on that. Okay, all right. Commissioner Stevens, you have a question? I do. Uh, obviously, this is an economic engine and will have great economic impact on Birmingham proper and Jefferson County as a whole. Uh, do you have any quantification of how many lives this will save you know, as we invest, it's, it's, if we're going to invest, if we need this commission votes it, uh, if there is a, some type of a, uh, uh, a number that uh, this type of research will, will uh, help the underprivileged and, and also help uh, anyone who has one of these, or afflicted by one of these diseases. It, it will be thousands in the next year or two, and it'll be tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands in the future. So. I, I would say it's a it's a hard thing to quantify because the science is evolving. Right. What's most important about UAB is the lives that will be saved will look like the people around this table, and that's not what's happening across the country. The second thing, as Commissioner, you talked about the jobs. The other thing that UAB does, because not every job in that building that actually is in those labs will be absent of people of color. UAB has is the most diverse tier one Carnegie research institution in the country. So what do I mean by that? 45%, nearly 40% of the undergrads are people of color. There is no research university in our space that has 40% people of color. So you're talking about doing jobs other than sweeping floors? We got 40% of our graduates who can work in that building other than sweep floors. So those people who are on the serve, there is one university that can go to and get access to that building, that's UAB. Now they can come from all the other colleges too, but if they wanna be at one of the best research institutions in the country, they can come where there's a culture where they fit in. And they won't have to sweep floors or do those jobs because they will be trained to do not only the science, but also lead. 
that's why we continue to grow. We've had the, this is the fourth year that we've had record enrollment, and that is driven by our undergraduates. As Selwyn said, 40 plus percent underrepresented minorities. 20 percent of our freshman class are first in their generation. So we're reaching into the inner parts of the city of Birmingham, Jefferson County, surrounding areas, and giving young people who have the ability, but maybe haven't had the opportunity, to get a world-class education, change their lives, change their families' lives, change the neighborhood, change our community and our state and our nation. If we don't do it, who will? And so we are very intentional about that. I think the final thing is that your dollars are precious and you look at that, but you ask the right question, would we do it without you? The question is, should we do it without you? And we should because there's no institution in this county and in this state that delivers on an ROI that's both financially and culturally relevant like UAB. You should never have to question that in your mind. Go to Alabama and Auburn, they look nothing like this. You can go to New York or Chicago and there's nothing that looks like this. You can go to San Francisco or Miami and there's nothing that looks like this. This is something you need to own and treasure because it won't come around very often. And we want you to be partners with us as we talked about before. We want you to be proud of everything that's happening at UAB. And we want you to feel an important part of it. That's why we invite you to campus each year, while we invite the city council, our legislative delegations. This is one project, the only one I know about, that every representative and senator that represents Jefferson County and our surrounding counties voted yes on. Unanimous support of this to the governor. And that's what we based our request to the governor on. So, let me ask this question, Mr. Chair. So let me ask, I'm glad that you mentioned that. What has the state committed to in terms of dollars? They have committed to work through a process this year to realize that request of $50, 50 million. million. Okay, so your ask of them is $50 million. And they have not, they've agreed to the program, but they haven't agreed yet to the funding until the new session comes in. Is that what I'm hearing? That's right. <coughs> I would be interested to, in knowing, Mr. Chairman, before we commit to another project, um, what what is it that the state is is wanting to do, so that if they are interested in matching the county's interest, um, I will say, um, sir, that um, your dissertation is very compelling. But I have to say, as a commissioner, one of the, the concerns that I do have is what do we say to the other colleges that are here locally? Um, is, is, is not ever, and I want to go on the record as saying this, is never to devalue what UAB has. It's about figuring out what do you do for Birmingham Southern? What do you do for Lawson State Community College? What do you do for Jeff State? What do you do for Sanford University? What do you do for these other schools so that you don't make other institutions believe that they don't have a place in the county? And, and so I'm saying that to you publicly because I know the chatter of politics and people will make it appear as though I'm saying something that I didn't articulate. And I'm very articulate. If I feel a certain way, and Mr. Watts, you need to know that, that's why I called you and I'm still waiting on your call months ago. I will articulate how I feel, that being the case. I want to know the state's commitment. I want to know, Mr. Chair of Economic Development, what will we be looking forward to in terms of investment in these other colleges that are in the Jefferson County property? Because I think that we need to do that. We're going to support one. We need to find a way to support all, and they all have some type of, of a program at its core that will meet everybody's needs. And that's, that's just what I wanted to say. Um, and, and I think you understand, sir, what I'm implying rather than saying it. I, I think you're, you're absolutely right. It's your responsibility and ours too to be a great partner for all of our institutions of higher education. I think you have every right to hold us accountable for that. Um, and certainly as a part of our DNA, we have wanted and make sure as opportunity gives us that we actually are good partners. And it's that capacity to do that is because of our size and our scope. 
So whether it's having somebody from Stanford or Miles or Lawson State <coughs> come to train regarding any healthcare scenario or partner to go to our schools, we have the breath to actually make that happen for them. So I, I, I feel confident that we will be good partners for every academic institution and that part of the argument is that an investment in us is not just about UAB. You have every right to hold us accountable that whatever you invest in us needs to benefit everybody in the higher education Absolutely. space. Well, let me, let me just say mm -hmm. this in closing. Um, if I were here and I had my rathers and it's water on the, on the bridge now, when I think of the value of this kind of program versus investing into another open air stadium, mm -hmm. your presentation would have gotten my support hands down because this is what changes lives. And everything cannot be about the stimulation of the economy. What you all are offering to the world, you just happen to be located in Birmingham and Jefferson County, are life-changing initiatives that we can hang our hats on. So that's why I asked earlier in terms of what was our agreement there because again, I'm more interested in really what you're offering today than had we looked at 30 years and we looked at $1 million a year. I can imagine that this will be something that's going to forever evolve into some other type of, I perceive, uh, that, that when one want to study and know about their own genetics instead of doing like a, uh, uh, where you can mail off and find out your genetics, you don't have to do that. You can go right here in the comfort of your own county and you can access that information. I think it's going to be crucial even when we talk about the penal system. I think it's going to be very life-changing when we're talking about um, uh, doing some different things that maybe even providing a cure for cancer, something that we haven't been able to do. But I think that UAB can do that. So I just wanted to say that for the record. And if either of you are interested, you and I have talked several times offline. You're interested in having my number. I would be interested in sitting down with the both of you individually or collectively. I will be your greatest cheerleader with the understanding that I know what, what is being asked. I know why it's being asked. And I will just say this in closing, Mr. Chairman. Whatever you do for one, we need to find a way, if not on a level of $1 million a year, we need to be consistent in how we support other institutions. Okay? Thank you. Mr. Patel? Yeah. Uh, Dr. Marks, <coughs> Dr. Vickers, uh, this is a great program. Very excited about this program. I was one of the first ones to sign up for it. One of the reasons I did is I'm a cancer survivor. And UAB literally saved my life. And I can say that uh, we have you at, uh, at Cooper Green. We're, we're you know, the patients at Cooper Green who volunteered to sign up have signed up to Cooper Green, and we're getting a good number of folks from Cooper Green uh, into the program. And I think that when you look at what's going to happen in the future in solving these issues with cancers and genetics, it's going to be very, very important. And, and congratulations to UAB for what you're doing on this project. Thank you. We look forward to the day in the not too distant future of sequencing the genome of every cancer that comes to us for care and looking for specific molecular targets that do have a curative potential for those cancers. That's what this is about. So the NI, the country has asked us because when they look at their precision medicine project because it's expensive, um, it's costly, you can imagine who's excluded, right? So most of the trials don't have people of color. So when they actually want to figure out how to get people of color included, they come ask us because we actually have a level of relationship in our communities where people enroll and they have a measure of trust of our institution. So what's important about that for our medicine to be relevant, it has to have everybody in America included. If you have it only for a segment of our population, it won't be relevant for everybody who lives in the country. The strength of UAB is that it actually does that better than any place in the country. It can include people who look like Americans across the landscape uh, both those who have and those who do not have. What I, what I see is a, a lot of the research is like, hey, well, let's try this on this and see what happens. Let's try this. It's a trial, basically. 
what 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 this is doing is like hey we've identified these markers these are the proteins these are the chromosomes these are the, the DNA that we need to target that marks so that that research can be then directed toward that so that's I think exactly that's right. I think that's huge that's what the precision part it's also called personalized medicine because we take your genome sequence and look at what you have and then how can we treat you more effectively to prevent diseases in the future and cure diseases like cancer. I may, I may not want to submit mine. I mean, I'm scared what y'all find. <laughs> <laughs> we, weren't, we, didn't, we didn't plan this for you guys to be here um, in the, the beginning of October and, and Breast Cancer Awareness Month, but I think it's very timely. Um, and I appreciate you guys being here and uh, hopefully we look forward to a good partnership uh, with you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you, you very, very much. much. Appreciate it. So, in the absence of, of the president, I know that. Oh, no, no. What would you I, I have one more. Okay. Um, this is also, um, the Sheree, um, this is also, October is also um, IT Security Month. Um, and I'd like to ask Sheree just to do a quick one or two minutes on. Um, uh, IT security. And Good morning, Commissioner. Thank you. Hey, um, you know, October is uh, Cybersecurity Awareness Month, and uh, with the last uh, several months, you have been hearing about the ransomware attacks across the country, and especially with the public sector, local organizations, the local government, there's a lot of ransomware attack and recently with Tuscaloosa, you have uh, DCH with the completely shut down and we are taking this uh, a very proactive approach across the county and we have been sending out these posters for all the departments. It's basically customized and it, there is a fish alert button with your email in case if any email comes that you don't recognize, that you don't know of, please don't click on the link because that can do a tremendous amount of damage no matter what. So please click on the fish alert or if you don't know, just delete that or call IT with the clicking on the fish alert button. So we are trying to be proactive and do all the awareness education across the board. We partnered with a company called As Know Before and providing that online training. But all we ask is be more proactive and be diligent, especially we can have the best of the security systems, but the vulnerability is the one thing that you don't know, you click on that link. That's how they're trying to get into these all big organizations. And once they get you, it's, it's very difficult to come out of it. So we are doing a lot of those security initiatives behind the screens, but what we ask is everyone to be more cautious. And if anybody needs any help, please don't hesitate to call the IT. We are here to work and give as much information as we can. But uh, PP, please be cognizant of any suspicious malware emails that come your way. Just delete it or click on official. So I always ask you, uh, thank you for all your support. We have been getting tremendous. And we did a, a survey across the board with the county. And the way we are doing, our employees are reporting it, is we are ahead of industry average, so which is really good. So I thank everyone's proactiveness in that one, but please be cautious on this. Thank you. Yeah, there was something that hit yesterday from EMA. Uh, yes, sir. That's, that's one of the things that immediately we are doing a contract with SecureWorks. We are monitoring everything. Uh, and the minute we got the information, we blocked that email address. Yeah, and we locked all the emails, yes. so. Yeah, uh, that, that's that's one of the things that we are more worried about because constantly there are things coming up on our network, and we have been really, really, really very mindful in terms of what information is coming through our network. Mr. Nye, uh, I've had they've had several attempts to uh, uh, get HR to change my bank my uh, payroll deposit in some uh, called Go Bank, which is. That's probably Walter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they, uh, what's scary is, is uh, what's scary is uh, they have my social security number. Yeah. And yeah. so they have tried, they have tried several times. So we yes. all need to be very careful. And we have been uh, preaching this to our uh, department heads and the staff that everybody needs to be careful. 
they, they had mine in, uh, it's, it was six years ago. You remember when I was in the city? Mm -hmm. city, city back in 2011. And I spent out over $15,000. And it's my credit and, and my uh, identity is still wandering around where they sell it. They sell your stuff to different places. And it's still, it's, 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 it's counter clean, but it's not where it should be. People are still trying to, uh, in Europe and stuff, using my name and my social security number. You're in Europe, you're traveling. Mm -hmm. I wish I would. Shreve, will you guys be doing anything else over the over this month? Since it's the IT, the it's security this, the month? cyber, we are, we'll be sending, we already sent a newsletter, and as more information comes along, we're gonna pass on to all the employees. At the same time, we ask everyone to go to the new before website and go through the training aspect, which is very important. We had several Texas uh, county and cities that were hit a few weeks ago. Government agencies. Yeah, several counties and cities completely shut down all their online operations, uh, which is very scary. Is that why my internet don't work that good in all? <laughs> <laughs> what what <laughs> have we done to safeguard and back up? I had stepped out. That's the yes, sir. Uh, do are we back? Are we backed up to the cloud? Yeah. Uh, what what we have done is what would we do? Yes, sir. If we were held in ranch. Okay. Uh, good question, Commissioner. Uh, uh, no organization is fully prepared, but we are trying our best. So from the email, which we consider as a critical application, we have already moved it to cloud, that is Office 365. So we don't store anything locally in terms of any email accounts, data, or anything. Everything is, is in Microsoft Azure Cloud, Office 365. At the same time, all our major categories, we categorize it tier one, tier two critical applications. All of those systems are in our data center in IT on seventh floor, where we have a direct replication data in Bessemer, in Valley Creek, which is our hot DR site. So whenever information comes onto our data drive here on, on servers, we immediately replicate it in our D DR hot site. And we have, from there, we take backup tapes from there. So those are the precautions that we are doing, but the ideal thing is probably next year or two, we would like to take many of these aspects and put it in the cloud so that we can do a complete business continuity program in place. You know, that's, that's the goal, should be the goal. Yes, sir. For, for the and and we, are, we are working and, towards that. And I would worry about you sending some type of malware to your backup system. Yes, yeah. that, that's where, uh, that's where these ransomware attack owners, they try to attack the backup aspect of that. Right. A and one other thing that we are doing, working closely with the county attorneys and risk management offices, last year, 2018, we have subscribed with cybersecurity insurance policy for $5 million. This year also, we have renewed that. However, with the intent of the cybersecurity ransomware attacks happening and the amount of money that's being spent by these local governments, uh, we will be coming to you in the next commission meeting. We are trying to increase, increase the, the premium aspect for the coverage aspect to $15 million. <laughs> so we are trying to make sure that county is protected from all aspects in case of a cyber uh, attack, breach or ransomware attack happen to us. So from the cyber, from the insurance aspect also, we're trying to cover up from that. So you should be getting something in the next commission meeting for Thank you. Turn on, done. All right. Thank uh, you. Josh. Uh, this commissioner called me Wednesday, asked to go first. She called Thursday, asked to go first. So I heard if she couldn't go first, she might do something. So there you go. Community development is hurt. Uh, so, for, yeah, for Green, the first four are provider contracts and one amendment. Um, two of those are our primary care, are in our primary care clinic, one of them is our general surgeon, and then we have a, a lady, Dr. Wright, who does our radiology reads. Number five on your list is a service maintenance agreement for the analyzers in the lab, for the HEMOC analyzers. And the sixth one on your list is a next-gen amendment. That one looks funny because there's no money. Basically, all we're asking for for that amendment is to change the terms so that they don't manage our passwords, we're going to manage them ourselves just because this is for our um, 
EMR in the, this is our new EMR that's coming on board, and we can't wait 48 hours for them to turn around a password reset, for example, so we want to be able to do that. So. Now this um, surgeon contract, that's post-op surgery? That um, she really does surgery evaluations. Uh -huh. It's like six and a few other, like she might do a breast biopsy on occasion. She does do post-op surgery stuff too, but more, more uh, pre-surgery evaluations. Move one through six. Sorry. Good morning, Commissioners. We only have one item uh, this morning for accelerated risk management. Um, the resolution authorizes the Commissioner's President to execute a contract between Jefferson County. Alabama and accelerated risk management to provide lead-based paint protection services in support of our housing rehab program. Uh, we are required to lead-based paint uh, test all houses that were built before 1978. I'll second. I'm just asking what 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 are we targeting in the area? I mean, 9,000 seems kind of low to get the whole county. Well. Well, that's, yeah, yeah, that's just what we thought, uh, well, that's what's cost effective, and that's one of the reasons we're going with this firm, because they're so cost effective to carry out these services, so that that is sufficient to carry out what we need at this time. So what happens when they identify a house that has lead-based paint? Yeah, we have to come up with some form of whether or not we either do it or bait the lead out of the house. We have to, they, they would actually take the lead out of this identify. Do they use just a little uh, rubbing? That's where they break it and then they rub them. That's, that's correct. That's the testing. That's correct. Yeah. That's where they test. That's correct. So they had to remove it out of um, the Birmingham <coughs> Authority. I remember back in the 70s and the early 80s. Uh, Y'all probably don't know the um, Authority. Can I get a motion on all of that? I thought it's already been moved. It's already been moved. Yeah. Okay, it's been first and second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. I have uh, two uh, grants, uh, one for the next city city jail, and the other one has went through the system at Birmingham Urban League. Hold that. Birmingham Urban what? League. Okay. Check it. In first and second, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, and I also have uh, a uh, one presentation I would like to have just a few minutes to talk about the sensors. Uh, I have uh, someone here. Um, I've got a resolution that's going to come out of my agenda about the census. Okay. Yeah, because I wanted her to talk about the grant that I wanted uh, Dr. Hamilton to apply for. Okay. Uh, you want to wait to. We, we can do it either way. Either way, I tell you what we can do. Why don't we go ahead and present that resolution out of, out of, your, out of your committee? Okay. And, uh, that way we'll have that done. Um, I'd like to be an answer. Sure. You don't have to do it. Do you want to continue? No, I mean, I'm going to wait, wait until she finishes. <clears throat> All right. So what I will do is I will get the information for you. It's called the Complete Count Committee. 2020 Census Drive Complete Count Committee. And uh, what, what you got yes, I think it'd probably be best to yes. let, uh, let her go ahead and yes. say it because it's you've been working on it for a uh, year. Uh, yeah. Good morning. Uh, I'm Carla Singleton with the US Census Bureau. I am the partnership coordinator for the state of Alabama. I am working side by side with the state of Alabama. The governor uh, signed an executive order in 2018 that established a statewide complete count committee. And the state legislator has uh, made available $1 million uh, to support that make sure that everyone in Alabama is counted. And our motto with the U.S. Census Bureau is that count everyone, count them once, and in the right place. So Jefferson County has over 30 some odd uh, municipalities and we are working to make sure all of them have a complete count committee 
Uh, and if you look um, down the I-59 corner uh, through the west part of Jefferson County, you'll find that this is where your most uh, at-risk community of low-income minority population live. And in across the state, across the county, also you have those areas in Karen, the city of Karen and Center Point, uh, in Homewood and Hoover. Uh, but we want to make sure that everyone is counted uh, and, and make sure that we get a complete and accurate count, not only for Jefferson County, but for the state of Alabama. So as the U.S. Census Bureau, we're working hand in hand to make sure, again, uh, those cities have complete count. Uh, we are uh, just under six months away from that actual count on April 1st of 2020. That is the mandated date by the U.S. Uh, Constitution to count the population of the U.S. and its territories. Uh, so we ask complete counts, committees to be established in the local government so that they get the message out to their communities. Uh, residents uh, uh, recognize trusted voices. They respond to trusted voices. They respond to those persons who look like them. And we are uh, working with communities to make sure that that message is out there. We work through this process over the next six months to raise awareness, to educate, to engage, and make sure people participate. And Could you give us the deadline? Uh, for, um, I can't speak directly for ADECA who is handling the grants. But I'm the talking about the ending of the, 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 uh, is the census start April 1st. April 1st. Start. It starts in July of 2020. So we will, we will start in March sending out invitations and letters to every resident in the, in the county and in, in the state acknowledging that it is time to count the population. Be ready to go online, uh, fill out your questionnaire. You also, if you don't fill it out within that first two week period uh, of March 1st between, uh, March 1st, March 23rd through the 21st of, April, of April, then you may receive a paper, paper form and you'll get that questionnaire and you can mail it back. But we are really pushing to have people go online. This is the first time in U.S. history that you've been able to complete the questionnaire online. And we want to make sure that people have access. So that means people that don't have broadband in right. their neighborhoods, who don't have access uh, to computers, that we use opportunities uh, that the state legislature is making these funds available to create strategies uh, so that people have access, whether it's through the libraries, uh, create a mobile uh, terminal with computers that can roll through the county and set up uh, something like a mobile uh, library, put those computers in that mobile vehicle and roam the county to make sure that people have access and complete that phone, uh, questionnaire over the phone. I want to, uh, can you tell them how important this is and what this affects, uh, you know, by being counted? By I mean, making sure the population is counted, what we can receive from this. Yes, getting a complete count um, for the 2020 census, if you first recognize that body mandate, it affects the appropriations of federal dollars coming back to the state. And it affects the allocation of representation in Congress. And more importantly, if you look at the state legislature, most of the funding mechanisms coming back and being distributed state dollars to the counties and cities is based on the program to share of your 2010 or the city or population. Gas tax money just recently passed in the legislature this past summer. So that's gonna be distributed based on the population of municipalities and counties. If you look at the online economics of sales tax, uh, retail tax that goes to the state, that comes back to those counties and cities based on the population of the cities and counties. So it impacts you both financially at the federal level and at the state level. And can you tell them about this, you know, about the impact on the CDBG money? And it's because the people really don't know, you said for federal dollars, what do it be? Uh, they, uh, your how highway income, dollars, how? your transit dollars, your CDBG funds, your Medicare uh, programs, your Title I programs that goes to your kids, uh, free lunch program. All of those fund funding programs are impacted based on your population. So you get your share of dollars based on that population count. Can I go now? Yes. <laughs> so, so we're talking about um, you know, getting everybody an opportunity to, to do it electronically. Is there a mobile app or is there that a We are expecting that there will be a mobile app. Okay. And, and beginning in March uh, 23rd of next year, 
that will go online and be pushed out so everyone be, can be able to go whether it's using your cell phone, your smartphone, your iPad, laptop, laptop, computer, whatever your technology is, you'll be able to access it and fill it out over that mechanism. Thank you. So what? Go ahead. Okay. So I, I know you and I talked in the office and so what what is it that you propose as president? At this time. Oh, he's passing now. Because, because he, here's my question. How much money, John Henry, did the county uh, uh, approve or is investing into the census marketing? We allocated uh, 50000 in the uh, PIO's budget for census for FY20. So I would be accurate in saying we have over 650,000 citizens, right? It represent Jefferson County, am I right? Thank you. It's about 660. It's what now? 660? Come on, population for Jefferson yes. County? I think yes. about 660. Okay. And so let me let me say this. Um, I know that Commissioner Tyson is more than capable of, of, of making sure we have a, a strong um, presence as it relates to census. Um, I'm just interested in what is the county's commitment to, to to put funds behind her rather than her turning into a workhorse, and and we only putting up fifty thousand dollars to reach six hundred and sixty thousand folk. I will say this yesterday. I'm sure we all had the pleasure of receiving a phone call, a text, and an email. Did that happen to any of you all yesterday? Oh what? From EMA? Yeah, you were. We already had that discussion. Well, sorry, but I'm, I'm going to have it again then, Joe. All right, so that's the kind of support that I think that if you're going to put Commissioner Tyson out there, then those are some of the resources that we have of all we're investing is $50,000 into this project. Now, you know, she's good about um, uh, applying for grants, and certainly we need to support that effort. But, but Mr. President, if she's going to have to be the face for it, then we need to put the money behind it. And we need to put the resources behind it. So just like yesterday someone was hacked, and you have email, text, and a phone call, that's the kind of support that she's going to need. Are we willing to provide that additional support so that she can remain a commissioner and not just a commissioner given a committee just with a title, but we didn't put no resources behind it? What are we willing to put to this committee? Is my question, Mr. President. A bit to this body. Can I ask a question? No, I'm saying, do you have, hold on, sir. Do we have any idea in terms of when you came up with this beautiful resolution, <coughs> did you, I mean, you, you can't just have a committee <coughs> and we talk about federal funding being tied to everyone being counted. My question is, <coughs> did we not think of what it's going to cost to effectively have a campaign, not like the 200th anniversary <coughs> bicentennial campaign, but that we got one with folk who know that if you are an ex-felon, you still need to be counted. If you are a person, man, woman, boy, girl, infant, you need to be counted. That costs money. Are we willing to put some money behind this committee? Where would you propose this money to come from? I, I would tend to think this is your resolution. <coughs> This is your appointment. You appointed her to this committee. And you want me to determine the funding source? Absolutely. Gotcha. And not just out of your discretionary. No. It needs to come somewhere out of general fund Some, at a recommendation. Yeah, sure. And and not just no economic <coughs> development, because you know I think y'all think I, that's I your little you pot. Now you're qualified. No, I'm not qualifying you. What We're I'm saying gonna is uh, you're going to get her some help. <laughs> Well, not her. You're gonna help. You're gonna, you gonna get her some help. Your colleague. I got you. I got you. But okay. It, uh, we do. So you're not gonna just stick on a committee when no. when when. No, I'm just saying, now, Miss President, you don't just you don't just put on a committee <coughs> and then give her this kind of a uh, task, and knowing the amount of people that we have, and we're not gonna put no money behind her to support her. We still got a supporter. Okay. We don't want her to, to not show up for a committee meeting and commission meeting because she's been overwhelmed by something that's unrelated mm -hmm. to what's on the agenda. I understand. Okay, well, and I understand too. I understand you too. I no, I'm, I asked to look for this establishment of this resolution for a complete count committee. 
of telemetry. It says, whereas the United States Census Bureau will conduct a decennial uh, census in the spring year of 2020, and it, uh, we need to count everyone. It's important that that's done. And there's hereby established an ad hoc committee, notice the Jefferson County Complete Count Committee, the commission shall appoint a chair. Uh, said committee to the county chair, and I, I will, I am going to recommend that Commissioner Tyson be that chair. It's not included in this resolution, but I would like to add that to that. The committee chairman authorized to apply for grants on behalf of the commission, and I believe that you're already underway doing that. So I think that uh, we have the right person, we have the right method, and with, with proper funding, we can get it done. The committee is empowered to establish a subcommittee to which it may carry out its functions and purpose. And each commissioner has it. Meeting on this committee shall be open to the public. The committee shall automatically dissolve with no further action of the body at the conclusion of the duties of the committee. Uh, I'd like to offer this as oh, hold on, Mr. President. So let me make sure that I, I'm reading this correctly. You're saying it's the body, it's the work of the body, not the work of the president, who is appointed to this committee. Am I correct? You're very correct. Okay. Because I didn't know about it. I had only heard. And I'm in full support. Let me just say this on the record. I'm in full support of, of Commissioner Tyson. Uh, it would have been nice that before you, you put that to her, that after you put it to her, then at least that the commission is, is going to vote on it as a body. Because it's a commission, not a president appointment. That's the reason why I'm saying, Mr. President, so we don't play no head games with one another. Then if you're going to put her out there, that's why I'm saying I want to make sure that we're putting adequate funding out there so that she can have the support that she needs to do what she needs to do. Sure. That's all I'm saying to you, Mr. President. I'm here. Okay. And it would have been nice, you know, we, we talk about communication and put all our feet on the one table, and for some reason, the, the foot always do the peaky boot. And I wonder who's doing that. It's certainly not me. So uh, while we're doing this, I'd also like for us to put a dollar amount associated with it. Since seemingly, you know where all the money is. Well, and it'll be, it'll, be, it'll be nice that by Thursday that you put some money uh, to, to this resolution so I'll that she can have full support. No, I'm, I, hold on, Commissioner. If we're going to move the resolution, move it so that there's money attached to it to support this campaign. I don't know that we could do that. Yeah, oh yeah, we can, we can do anything, like, you know. Well, Michael, uh, you, what you need to do, I will accept your motion. Do you want to amend that motion? Well, I, I, I'd like to amend the motion so that there is a budget attached to this resolution to support Commissioner Tyson's effort with this census. Oh, okay, okay we, have, we have an amended motion. We have a second. Okay. I have a second. All right, let's vote on the amended motion. The amended motion is to adopt this and to and fund it. And put some money in. Okay. I, we also, I, had, we also I had determined the funding source. We haven't determined the funding source. Public and private dollars. Uh, well, I, I we, 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 we dollar can't speak right. for the private. We can only uh, speak for what's public. in our general fund budget. Can, can I add to that amendment that we had Commissioner Tyson as the chair of that committee? Well, we've already adopted that. That's what we're saying. She got friends on this side. <coughs> All I'm saying is we just want to make sure that, there, that there's funding that there's funding with, with, with Cooper Green. She didn't. So I'm just asking if we make sure that there's money attached to this resolution. Yeah, you ain't going to love her harder than I do because I've been with her. Okay. So... We, we can put a, a determined amount of money, uh, but, but she needs to have money attached to this campaign. Do we have a dollar amount in mind? Does anybody what? Did, and and this is this is above the fifty, right? This is dropping. 
right in here in the last minute. So, do you have a dollar amount that you would feel comfortable with? I, that's why. I to start, and then we can we can always add to or. I, I know uh, Birmingham. Uh, I've talked briefly to the mayor about it. They have not actually came up with a dollar amount. They were actually trying to wait on on, on me also. So uh, I, I I went to the class and it did say that we can raise public and private dollars. Okay. So we can raise private dollars and we are going to need private dollars. It's going to take uh, over way over a million dollars in order to reach everyone because of the uh, population that we do have. We have a lot of poor people in Jefferson County that truly do not believe in the census. And that's that. That's the that was the question I had for this uh -huh. young lady. That's is the there's going to be some who are suspicious, right. that don't want to be counted, but yet every person counted is so important so that we don't lose that congressional seat, which we're very likely to do. Absolutely. And they don't really, and, and, and what it is, you got to educate them. I, I went out, I told you I've been working uh, on this for a, uh, a couple of months, and, and, and uh, the president and skills, I've talked to both of y'all about this. They really think that you can go to jail behind this. Parents don't want to fill it out for their children because they get in trouble. They say, oh, he's going to come there looking for them. And it, it's just all, and, and I have a ticket, a speed ticket. And if I fill this out, they're going to come and pick me up. I owe a bill, and, and I owe child support. All of this is mixed up. So we've got to have enough of people to go out to churches and to senior citizen homes. Uh, it's got to be advertised everywhere to where these the people the, the hidden people they are hidden they don't want to be found but once you talk to them they will fill it out you know but you got to actually talk to them and you got to be you know able to to relate to them and it's, it's not only because in the black population ma'am am I, am I right or wrong are the ones that's the most undercounted correct okay now and, and, and it is so you got I got to get some people that's Latino with me to go with me to reach their, pop, reach their population. We've got to go out, we got to get uh, the, uh, the tablets in order to go into the area. We've got to get remote uh, Wi-Fi in order to run the tabs when we go to corner and places like that that don't have uh, the uh, Wi-Fi that we need to actually fill it out on site right there while we're with them. So it is a costly task, but it's, it's a public and private task because the private dollars they're going to gain if we get our numbers up too within this state. This state is going to hurt. And if we do not count these people, New York lost trillions of dollars because of the black population being undercounted. And it's going to happen here in Jefferson County. We take it as a joke, as a Republican and Democratic issues and a, and a have and have not. It's we're all going to lose. Whether you Republican or Democrat, if these folks are not counting. So, so we got to cover the whole county. We got to wrap a bus and go into the, uh, wrap a van and go into these communities. And you got to have unique ideas and you got to, you're going to have to hire at least two or three people that's going to have to be on payroll in order to complete this, uh, this task. This is the first time I've done this. This is, I've been doing this for at least 15 years. I know how hard it is. Mr. Jackson is very aware of the work that I have done with census. So then do I need to uh, amend my motion to um, uh, to say, Mr. Finance Chairman, uh, that, uh, that we support the resolution, Commissioner Tyson uh, being the, the chair representing Jefferson County uh, with a funding amount to be determined based upon the needs presented. I uh, second that. Okay. Because then we're not so putting you on the spot about trying yeah. to give us a dollar. And, 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 and actually, too, we can come up with a, uh, because I'm not the only one on the committee now. They have a whole list of people that they want to get on this committee. And if you look at it, it's big, a big portion of it is the uh, private sector. So, so that's the motion. Yes. And that's this committee. That's the committee on there. We got to pick those the, people. Is there already a committee established? No. Oh, okay. This that's what they're still. This is what they're doing. 
this, this lines it up and um, it, this came uh, as a concerted effort and well, we just want to make sure that, Mr. President, but there's a motion on the floor, okay? All in favor say aye. Aye. Because we want this commission to know all of us are on board with <coughs> supporting her. Okay? It's a commission effort. Thank you. All right? Can you let me go on and, because I don't have Please. anything with yes, my report, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Because I, I asked him. I'm just saying I asked him. Because I really know how important it is that we count Jefferson County hard, hard right. to reach. I'm with you. I'm gonna support you. All right. So for um, uh, for Public Works Community Service Intergovernmental Relations Committee, uh, my I, we don't have any items. I did have two items that were in the in these. Uh, um, uh, both are. Uh, community grants and uh, and so I wanted to move those items at this time those are the two there Mr. President everyone should have a copy do you not have a copy all right can we entertain a motion at this time please they're both the community grants yes yes That's what I said when I introduced them. Right. And the community grants are uh, one to the city of Birmingham Park and Recreation for $1,500. And the other grant is to the Data Project for a grant of $35,000. Yep. So I'd like to entertain a motion at this time for two community grants, please. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded. All those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Right, thank you. So are we even now, I guess? Go ahead, Mr. President. Uh, yes, because I know that there's an item that will come up uh, as relates to, as a matter of fact, I'll go ahead and, and introduce this other one. Uh, this is a resolution. Uh, and my understanding, law department made sure it was distributed to everyone that you should have gotten and someone signed for in your office. Uh, this was, uh, and it reads this particular resolution. And if you don't have it, I'll share the one that I have. I'm reading strictly what the law department passed out. Uh, it should have, should have come to your office on October 4. See that? October yeah. 4, yeah. Uh, and it said now therefore be it resolved by the Jefferson County Commission that the approved community grant fund for fiscal year 2020, which allocates the use of $225,000 per commissioner, be, be used at the discretion of each individual commissioner to fund community grant projects or infrastructure projects within Jefferson County in accordance with the processes and procedures outlined in the administrative order 18-1 and the previous resolution of the commission approved on June 20th, 2019. Uh, I will entertain a motion or if there are any questions or if there are any other uh, submissions. I know that the president uh, had seen, if my memory serves me correctly, there were like three versions of that same one resolution. and. Uh, uh, I'm open at this time if anyone has anything differently. Uh, I'd like to also, before I open it up on the floor, uh, Mr. Uh, Lawson, if you don't mind to explain this body of work that your office prepared in terms of so that the wording does not be confused to the general public that this is not just about community grant being supported, what this actual item is. Do you mind, Mr. County Attorney? I think that that resolution is kind of based on the conversations that went back and forth at the last meeting and it's pretty self-explanatory. It just says that there's $225,000 that's appropriated for each commissioner and this allows each commission to decide whether they want to spend that money either whether it is uh, spent with community grants but using the processes that you have in place with either the community grant process or the infrastructure process. There's also a recommendation that I, said, that I sent around is that there also should be 
an amendment, in my opinion, to the AO. Your resolution last time specifically set out the authorization for community grants to be done with 501s for parking surfaces and for buildings. And that is, we can apply the, the, path, the, the procedures in the AO, but if that is something that the commission wants to permanently put in place, I recommend that that definition for parking services and buildings be included in your uh, administrative order. So that is a continuing uh, definition or standard of process. So if it is the commission's pleasure to do that resolution, I would also recommend an amendment to the AO to include that definition permanently. So uh, 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 I, let, me just, let me just get this clear. Mm -hmm. Say that again, that you want to add your resolution, well, the resolution. Which is, resolution? The resolution before you references your resolution. I don't last have a resolution year. before me. This one? The one that came this in the, the the one that I. Oh, this one. Okay. Okay. That resolution specifically references the AO, and it references the procedures in your resolution of last year. The resolution of last year was changed to include the ability to do infra infrastructure grants with 501c3s as it relates to parking surfaces and buildings. That was something that was changed in that resolution and although we could apply the general standards in the AO, that specific definition is not included in, your, in the AO as it exists now. So my suggestion is that if that is going to be a continued practice of the commission that you're going to allocate monies to uh, nonprofits, that that definition that is in your last resolution be included and added to the AO for permanent operation. Well, where's the sample of where it would go in the AO 18-1, I guess? I sent, you, I sent that also with your, with your memo, it's highlighted in yellow. Let me just it's look. a it's a very it's a it's a yeah it's a it's just a simple addition of the of the language <clears throat> that the commission approved in its previous resolution so that it makes it more permanent and and there are three choices as we, as we move forward we can a the AO and the resolution just as it was and add it. 2020. We can make some changes to try to be more encompassing with the, with the needs of our districts, or we can make the change where it's totally at the discretion of the commissioner to, to how that money is spent, whether it's 501c3 or whether it's uh, infrastructure. Now, uh, Commissioner Steele very articulately stated her position what she needed. I would like to, uh, I promised her and promised the commission that I would come up based on our last meeting, that I would come up with a, uh, hopefully a compromise <coughs> of where it would take care of everyone. So I'm going to read that and present that and it's up to the pleasure of the commission. Do we have that before us too, Jim? Uh, I think you do. I don't know what I've got, what I don't have. Here. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've got that. Okay, yeah, that's the one that uh, I circulated last, maybe Thursday, right? Anybody else need it? Okay. I'm going to read it because I think it's <coughs> and highlight the area. Can we get one from the minute, clerk? <laughs> Mine are too. All right, we, what, what we talk about, where is the Jefferson County Commission to approve the community grant of $225,000? Per commissioner for fiscal year 20, or a total of 1 million 125,000. Where is the county commission directs how these funds will be used in accordance with the county administrative order 18 1 as amended and the rules of Jefferson County Personnel Board? Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Jefferson County Commission that no more than $100,000 of these funds are allocated to the community grant program, program for each commissioner shall be expended on the qualifying nonprofit organization with a suggested minimum grant of $2,500 recognizing that each grant takes a minimum of eight hours of community, of county personnel to process. 
and here's where we, we change the language. Be it further resolved that the remaining funds must be used towards capital or infrastructure projects, projects within the county initiated by a government, government entity, entity to include Jefferson County or qualifying capital or infrastructure projects <coughs> initiated by a non-profit organization. And here's another change, <coughs> request, not require, request a minimum match of 10%. The suggested minimum grant is $5,000 if the county personnel is not required. If county personnel are required, a minimum grant is 15000 for a capital or infrastructure improvement projects and 5000 for road maintenance work. All work, work performed by county personnel will be scheduled, scheduled based on the county's prior commitment priorities. No county personnel or equipment may be used for infrastructure grants to qualify non-profits. To the extent of the law, capital infrastructure improvements for qualifying non-profits shall be defined as capital equipment, improvements, construction, or maintenance for buildings or parking services owned and utilized by a qualifying nonprofit organization or government and entity. Uh, I believe that that will take care of most, if not all, of the asks that, that uh, Commissioner you asked concerning the uh, fire department, Forestdale, and, and the park that you work in. So I got with the law department, Mr. President. So I want the public to be very clear in terms of what this resolution does. You have the word suggested amount, a minimum amount of $5,000 if county personnel is not required. <coughs> However, the caveat is, if county personnel are required, you do not have the word suggested. Right. You have the minimum grant is $15,000, okay? You have suggested for one, and you have a mandate for the $15,000 if we have personnel. <coughs> if your project comes under $15,000, then even if it is an infrastructure grant, then it would not be applicable because of the fact that you haven't met the $15,000 threshold. Now, Commissioner Tice and I, we recognize that we have unique needs. I've voiced those needs, and in addition to that, I took it a step further. I also had a discussion with the county attorney. <coughs> when you speak of capital equipment and improvements, mattresses, lawn equipment does not apply. Even with what we have here, except <coughs> there is, I thought- That's not right. No. I, I had that same conversation. Let no. me finish. <coughs> But we last discussed, Mr. Uh, uh, County Attorney, is that we need to quantify what is capital equipment so that it does cover that those is, items. That is correct, that there needs to be the definition added of what and that is. That's why I said you let but me not, finish. But not that lawn equipment or mattresses don't apply because we don't know yet what the definition will be. No, but. Uh, it, if we're going to use the definition that is either the financial uh, definition that I think Mr. Henry could probably address better, but I think that's generally uh, equipment that uh, lasts for more than a year. But otherwise, uh, we haven't, and this resolution does not specifically say what uh, capital equipment is. So and I want to make that clear. I did. There's no, there's no statement as to what doesn't qualify because I don't know yet what that okay. is. Okay, and that's why I asked when you were in my office today. I'm not going to put words in your mouth. I'm not going to impugn your character. Mm -hmm. that's, ne that's not where I was coming from. <coughs> I am putting on the record that I had a discussion with the law department. And the bottom line is that we've had projects in the past, and my staff is behind me, and we know with the Farsdale project and some other projects, the law department kicked it out because it did not cover or in between capital equipment and improvements, which is what that my is, conversation was with you. Which is why I'm saying that this resolution as it reads right now does not take care of that. Under the infrastructure part. Yeah, now, now yeah. $15,000 for capital is needed and necessary because it's 
you can't bring county personnel uh, for for a project without it at least with, without it having at least fifty thousand dollars. That was those were minimums that were established through um, Mr. Barker thinking that we, we had to have economy of scale. Now, if there's any, it doesn't say anything to, about anything that's any less than that. Uh, you can use that. You can use any five and six for that. Uh, do we have any questions? We need yeah, to? I do. Uh, uh, how many? And give me an example of a county personnel project that would qualify for the fifteen thousand capital infrastructure. I mean, all I, all I know is basically we've got roads, and I think roads is very interesting here for road maintenance. But what's an example that we would use person, county personnel um, to require the threshold of 15,000? Replacing a pipe or culverts or putting in uh, concrete curb and gutter or something like that. I think the initial it's like the sidewalk that, yeah the sidewalks that was kind of in there so mm -hmm. we would we would spend more money on a project and, and not quite so much on a lot of processing of many little one thousand dollar grants for example mm -hmm. I have, a, I have a, another question. When you second paragraph, you said the administrative order 18-1 as amended. I'm not sure I have uh, the amended 18.4. The amended is the most recent one that you have that was done on June 20th. That's the one that, that should be on the, um, on the website. What was different in the June 20th and the original? Do you can you recall off the top of your head? I don't remember all of some of the some of the things that were in there. We did some things to try to simplify them more, but um, I don't remember. How'd that work out? <laughs> all right. Um, I would offer. Uh, 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 do we have a motion in a second? And all that on here? Or are we just talking. Oh, we don't have anything. We don't have anything yet. Okay. So I would I would like to offer a substitute basically your motion and move the just move the the top numbers a little bit to do the 501 C3 at 125,000 and leave the um, um, 100,000 for um, infrastructure and I have a copy of that if you would like that it's just it's just kind of looking for a compromise here so let me ask could the word suggested for the fifteen thousand dollars be included in in uh, the proposal that you are putting forth uh, we have suggested amount for five thousand if the word suggested could also be Considered for the fifteen thousand as well. Now, if if I read this, I would think the suggested in front of the the, the five thousand would apply to the 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 fifteen thousand as well, reading it as a continuum. But to be clarified, I would I would certainly if if there's a question about that, then I would say yeah. If county personnel are required. The suggested minimum grant is 15. Can I ask a question? Did that, that hurt you? I, I, was, no. I remember sitting in the, um, I guess those, those budget hearings when the AO was being discussed previously, and Cal gave a great explanation, or, or John Henry did, about why the 15 was necessary. Do you, guys, do you remember the, your, the reasoning? Well, one reason, you know, we got 37 cities, and if 37 cities did a thousand dollar grant each, we got to mobilize 37 times, so that that starts making our money a little less efficient. 
So we were just trying to be efficient and make, make it a, worth going there and doing it. Um, sometimes, you know, if we're mowing a county road right by a city, that argument doesn't work well. We could swing by and mow a city street and then this, this kind of hurts us. We're there, we can do it real good. That's why I think it's there. Um, there's so many cities and if we do tiny little grants, it, it'll be tough to process them all in here because they take so long and then mobilization costs. Let me also say too. Um, well, let me, let me just follow up on that. Yeah, so I was about hearing, to. <laughs> what I'm hearing you say is this is burdensome to have all this detail in there to you guys. To process the, the grant? Yeah, for, to, to, well, I know sometimes the law on them has to be the referee and say, is this apply, is this not? So, I mean, y'all are saying this is burdensome, so. So. Well, you, you said it was burdensome when it was came to, like, if, if you were in, like, say you were in Trustville and you were going to, you know, uh, you know, uh, mow long, mow, mow right away or something, and you can move right into Leeds or, or Irondale. Um, that if you're already there and, and uh, active, then it's burdensome. That 15 is burdensome. Right. But it's like it's grass, it's not infrastructure. Right. But no, I, mean, I was just, about just, to just, tell just, him it was. Just, just as an example, if it's yeah. you're doing road work or sidewalk or something, but if you're having to move from one part of the county to the other, then it's purposeful because you're having to activate. And move right. someplace else. So, then so it could be either. It could be right. either or. And I get that. So let me ask this question, because I know we had the issue with Farsdale, where we paid for the mowing of the grass, and it was like fifteen hundred dollars. And then we learned later, okay, it's a community grant. So let's just say, hypothetically. Well, I don't even want to say hypothetically. What has been the behavior of the commission, uh, Mr. Calvin? Um, that you would say in terms of our standard community grant amount? Because I've never known, not community grant, but infrastructure grant, I've never known us to approve, not since I've been here, a grant that was $1,000 or $5,000. Anybody knows that typically an infrastructure grant is going to cost a lot of money, but it may not cost fifteen thousand dollars, but it may be ten thousand dollars. Or so. But 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 it's certainly not one thousand. So help walk me through the behavior, the spending behavior that you've seen from this commission. They, they've been, all been some pretty substantial, you know, good-sized projects. Uh, Lipscomb, Midfield. Uh, we did do some striping. or working on some striping in. Uh, Bessemer this lower cost but you know it's yeah, to me it's kind of worked out fairly well with good sized projects so my point is that's not even typical of our, or our pattern of behavior for that to even be an issue and so I'd like to understand too when I hear the word burdensome you know nobody's sitting at this table for free what is the burden that I'm hearing. What what is what is the burden? Walk me through what that looks I like. I think they were saying. I know we had an, a, a time. I can't remember which city. We were mowing the county roads, and some mayor called and said, "Man, I had my tractors are all broke down. Can you mow this street when you come by?" Well, you know, having to get to city to do a match and do all this paperwork. We've already mowed. We gone. We're way on down the road. I think that's what we were saying. In those particular little situations, the process uh, slows us down from being able to act quick. So, are you saying the amount of money causes you to not act quick quickly? Well, I mean, just the, the fact that we got to do the grant like we do, where the, the city's got to send in them a resolution and a match. After they sign it and send it in, then we have to approve it. You know, that's four weeks almost every time. But if I'm hearing you correctly, what I'm saying, I'm having a hard time with, with gathering. If you are a smaller city and you get that kind of call or we receive that kind of call, then first of all, that's not necessarily something that happens all the time. 
And if you were, are you saying that we would exclude that city because of the fact we don't want it to be a burdensome for us, so the way we cover that in writing, we said, well, you're going to have to do it at $15,000. No, I'm I mean, I hope you're hearing how that sounds, at no. least to me. If it's a smaller city, then we can't help that city because their need has to be $15,000 or greater. Why, why couldn't we set it at an amount if we were to set an amount at all that any city, large or small, could apply for a grant. Again, it's, it's all about helping the citizenry. When I hear the word burdensome, you know, you have to forgive me because, Cal, you know, uh, Mr. Market, that I, I, I favor you a whole lot. You know that. But I don't understand if I'm a smaller city and I need help, there's a reason why I need help. So why would you put wording there so that it eliminates that maybe I've tried to help myself, but I only got this little small pocket of, of issue, and I just need the county to help me, and you're saying, but I gotta wait until it's $15,000 before I can get any kind of help. Do you understand what I mean? I do. That, don't, I, that doesn't even sound good. That's, that was my point. When, when mobilization- I'm not asking for your interpretation. I'm going by exactly what he said. Now, whether you're for it or against it is irrelevant to me. What I'm saying is, none of us are here for free. And I'm trying to get an understanding if you are a smaller city, and if you try to help yourself, Adamsville, Mr. President, and for whatever reason that you get so far on your own, but it's not working, are you saying that it has to get to $15,000 in order for you to help these folks? That's what the, the initial intention of it was. Let's say a uh, city called and said uh, they want to do a patch. And we take the truck and the equipment and people over there and do one patch for, I don't know, $1,000. A month later, they said, hey, we got another patch. Our intention was, hey, let's do it all at once to make it efficient. My point about the mowing was we could be more efficient if this wasn't in there because we're already there. We could just... So are well, you proposing great. that we take the $15,000 out altogether? I, I'm proposing in certain situations the $15,000 hurts the process. So but then we, do we add the word suggested? Or are you saying remove the cap of $15,000? I think suggested would be fine. And that way, if it's something where <clears throat> where the roads director you know, recognizes that this is an inefficient process to keep coming back and forth, <clears throat> We would state that to y'all, and you could decide at that time. Suggested would kind of be a. I can live with the word suggested, but to, to, but to create hardship on these smaller cities, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't agree to that because I know that sometimes they may try to help themselves, and and we always talk about the fact that they need to help themselves, and if they try and if they fall short, then I would rather for us to pay less than fifteen thousand dollars to help them with their shortfall, than to say or require in writing. That if you don't do if you don't have a fifteen thousand dollar issue or not, then you know we don't have to help you with with, with your your issue. I mean, this this is supposed to be working for people and to be very people oriented and efficient at the same time. So I can stomach the word suggested because you know as well as I do, very few mayors going to call us and ask us for little small things anyway. That's rare. It's like we're taking an extreme to deal with a potential rare problem. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. common, it's not commonplace for these mayors to call us for something really small. So if they do call us, it has to be something that, that's really urgent, wouldn't you think? That is accurate. Okay. All right. So if we chat I, I just want to qualify yeah. when we were talking burdens and so I had a chop to finish. I think when he was giving his example, it was burdensome for them to have to go through the process. I also get that for the smaller cities, 15,000 may be burdensome. That was just my point. I just wanted to clarify. Okay. I believe the motion we have on the table is the one before us. So I'm going to go Then you can talk. Well, I'm the one representing and then you're taking over. I'm the one representing, Mr. President. We have two. No, listen. 
I put it under my report. I'm the I'm the presenter of the resolution. Right. That's why I say if you want me to, I mean, you can take over. But but no. what I'm saying, but you out of order. Yeah, you go ahead. Uh, okay, I just said so that I can be at least user friendly. I'm just more interested in the money getting to the people. Okay, so I said I will withdraw my resolution. Is my presentation? I withdraw my resolution, and then we can consider the other two that are on the floor. Thank you. And then I think Jim, didn't you put yours in? I I did. I put mine in, and you made some changes to it. And uh, <coughs> let me see if I can go to the changes that you made. Yo. All right. Uh, you changed the infrastructure. Oh, yeah. uh, you reverse the infrastructure of five hundred one c three money. Am I correct? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You, you yeah. Re reverse yeah. that. I saw that, and then you just right. added a suggested memo grant right. uh, to the back. That, that'd be my motion. Yeah. So Our we have motion. that is a motion before. So, so the difference between that and the motion that that I presented was that uh, the commission has the uh, ability to give one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars to five hundred one C threes and a hundred thousand for infrastructure, so vice versa. And with a suggested minimum grant of $15,000. That is the most Mr. President, I have a question regarding the motion to the motion. Wait a minute, you have what? I had a question to the motion. Uh, which motion? I'm talking, right, I'm talking about to right. this one. Okay. The only ask that I, I will, well, I don't even want to say I just I have something I'd like to say to the motion, not a question. Okay. The only ask is that I would like to have the definition of this capital equipment to be included within the passage of either or item, but but that we would have that capital equipment uh, defined in, in, the, in either of these resolutions. And, I, and my understanding is Mr. Henry, can, are you able or the law department able to give us a definition that can be included within this item so that we know what all that capital equipment covers? And I think Mr. Henry has the finance on it, but I would also like to ask if, if these two are going to be considered the same as I suggested that the AO be amended to include the definition of the uh, 501 uh, infrastructure price that 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 definition once it's voted on also be included in the AL to be amended to include that definition as well. If, if we move mm -hmm. this to the agenda, you make the proper changes and give it to us prior to the meeting, sure. and so we can consider those. Yeah. I didn't John hear John Henry. Though. Yes, sir. That's that's good. Thank you just a lot. Okay. Uh, John Henry, would you? Uh, Give us a definition of uh, uh, capital. You know, yes, sir. And, I, and I know what it's, it's. It's something you either expense it or you capitalize it. Correct. If it's something that's going to require capitalization, I think that's the proper definition to use. Yes, sir. Do uh, you want me to send it? No. Just, no, just get with Theo. And okay. And, and make sure. So based on what we, what okay. let me ask this, Ms. President. Could we not resolve this issue today so that Millie doesn't become burdened by too much of our changes? Is it is it possible that we can say capital and non-capital equipment? Would that not suffice, Mr. County Attorney and CFO, so that it does include some of the items that I spoke of at the fire station as relates to whether it be mattresses, lockers, or whatever that is, uh, this lawn equipment, if you had capital and non-capital equipment, is still equipment, is still the base word. Does that not get it, or you all are going to just give us a definition? Yeah, just define non-capital equipment. Did you want the definition of capital? Or yeah, not capital. 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 That's, you know, that's things that have right. a useful life over a year. You, you expense things. If you have top of pocket rights, uh, you know, usually expense that. Expense that. But, if you, but if you're buying mattresses or you're buying an air conditioner or things like that, that has a useful life of more year and you, and you capitalize it. So but that could be a non-capital 
item two. I think I think the the definition is between a thousand and five thousand. Just yeah, we for, for I think for the uh, for the grant purposes, what we've uh, or what the commission will will have to decide is we had capital assets are tangible assets with a useful life longer than a year that are not intended for sale in the regular course of the entity's operations. These assets are tangible property that cannot easily convert to cash and will remain in the possession of the entity for a long time. The purchase of capital assets should be set at an amount of greater than 1000 I, really? I would think that's a good definition. Okay. All right. But, uh, and that would, include, that would you know, cover I'm lawn equipment and things yeah, like that. Yeah. It would cover the uh, washer, the dryer, the industrial equipment. Yeah. That the uh, fire station was was looking for and things like that. And uh, and uh, on the case of the mattresses, we want to make sure if, if they're buying several mattresses to, to replace something, that would fall under that also because they would exceed thousand dollars. Correct. Correct. If they buy a good number of. Them. All right. Uh, to Joe, will you amend your motion to include that definition? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we have a. An amended motion. Do we have a second? Second. Have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. See how when we come together, Mr. President, it, it we all are all great minds just we work together very good. Smooth as silk. Smooth as silk. All right. Roads and transportation. We're going to go back up. That team off of uh, the district three other business. So we, we, were, we got out of line because we wanted to buy the two. Uh, Birmingham Jefferson Civic Center Authority of San Santa Cruz. Sewer, quick claim deed. Cal, you want to do that? You want me to do it? Uh, you can do it. It's, there's no sewer there or anything. It's just a quick claim and getting rid of that old Just get rid of that easement. Move the item. Second. Item from Moon, second. I'll first say aye. Aye. Right. We have five items from the County Attorney's Office plus the minutes. Uh, do we have any questions concerning those first five? I hadn't seen the, uh, tell me a little bit about the resolution to ratify the annual profile report for work comp. Uh, just, just, I mean, just basically what it is. It's a report that, that uh, is done on behalf of uh, our uh, TPA provider that talks about what we generally spend on work comp and those kinds of things. I'll get you more information on it. Okay. I'll move one, two, six. Second. Motion second. All in favor say aye. Aye. And one item from the Sheriff's Department. Move it. Right. Well, good morning, Commissioner. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, it is. Oh, we got a resolution to accept the commission accept the grant uh, for DOG, DOJ, excuse me, for victim assistance. It's a victim assistance grant. Uh, what it does is it, it, it'll allow us to enhance our uh, unit that we have now to be able to expand it out. We have uh, two people, uh, well, excuse me, three people, but the demand is overwhelming, uh, and this will allow us to expand on that unit and allow us to be able to participate with um, other community uh, programs that involve victims. Uh, what we do is we'll, our victims' uh, assistance or victim advocates, they are on call. Um, they will come out to uh, a scene if we if, if needed. Um, if there's a, a situation where we work a case or something like that, and there's a victim that needs assistance anywhere from from uh, court to uh, uh, helping to uh, explain court procedures or just anything that can come up. I mean, we've had them where we've assisted in funerals and different things like that. Right? So that's what it is. It's a you know it's an opportunity for us with this grant to expand our. Do we know the amount of the grant ballpark? Uh, seven seven hundred two thousand. So seven what? Seven hundred two thousand. Wow. Okay. Uh, I vote aye. All right. We have to go. Or I move, move it. I'll vote aye. Thank you. Oh, uh, county manager has nothing. Uh, nothing to offer this board, right? Yeah. That's how this all right, next we have fiscal year 20 submission grant, Alabama A&M University. And number, number two is this companion fiscal year 20 submission grant, Alabama State. 
be the funds to assist the promotion of the continuation of the Magic, Magic City Classic football game. Uh, I have a question. Sure. Do you have? I don't know. <laughs> so let me also, uh, uh, Mr. President, are all items budgeted items that we voted on as a commission? Are they um, are they all supposed to be presented as because it's under your other report? Is that moving forward the way that? It is, it is done, if you don't mind me asking. It, it would be, it has in the past pattern of practice that <coughs> anything that's not included as a district fund mm -hmm. is, is handled on that administrative committee. Now, I, I would be happy to have that changed if indeed. Uh, Do you mind changing? Well, well what, what I hadn't, well, where's that? Where does that authority come from other than the past pattern in practice? I mean, I'm just... I'm I don't just, know. Okay. You would have to ask someone who, who prepared the agenda. All right, Mr. Tellis, where'd that come from? All contracts are signed by the press. Of the well, I know we have every contract in here, but every contract in here doesn't go through District 3's other business. I mean, we have contracts all the time. I mean, I'm just wondering how... It, why, why is it under there? I mean, the same question she has, and, and he didn't know, so I'm asking you, since you're the, you, you, you do the agenda. Yeah, I think, that's what we've done in the past. If you want to change it. Well, I mean, I mean, just, I, it was just a curiosity question mostly, but, you know, I, I don't see any authority doing it. I was told it was in some kind of AO or something, but I don't, I don't. I don't know the organization or not organization resolution, but what that does. I just thought Jimmy had come around and sport the plastic now. Yeah. What what we've got, Joe, is that, is that comes from commission support and all the commission support uh, uh, items are, are come come through this office. So I, and that I'm guessing that's the reason why the county county manager's office did that. It should be any that come off of that uh, that community grant, that million one twenty five or whatever it is that that, that everyone uh, uh, voted on. That that anything that comes from that will come through the same. But hey, I I I so to I don't put it on any committee. I'm good. I'm, I, so, so if I have a community vote for that now, Mr. President. So if I have a community grant. Stuff I just I don't even have to come. It just comes to you and I. Well, if you don't already have, if you've already appropriated, I don't know how, how this got on there. Honestly, this 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 wasn't any of my business. Well, this and is. I certainly well, did I, not ask. Then the, then I guess the question goes to the county manager since y'all's office produces these. What's the question? How? Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. I, I'll be happy to speak on this, Commissioners. But when I get an item to put in for placement on the agenda, if there is not an otherwise appropriate place to put it, if it's something that the Commission is doing as a whole uh, for the last however many years I've been putting it together, I've always put those when they come to me on the Commission President's agenda when it's an item from the Commission as a whole instead of a, a district fund or, or something that a particular Commission responds to. Well, well then I. Then same question then uh, i'm gonna put it to you tony and and you could designate who you want to speak to me then that would be no different than economic development are you saying that economic development projects while it goes under the economic development chairman's uh, uh agenda just as the one he asked for this morning no these are the funds you know, that, that it came out of the budget this. committee you're under commission support. I understand, but they came out of the budget committee. Is what I'm saying. So, Mr. President, all well, things okay. but all th no, all things being equal, Mr. President, you say you don't mind it being changed, so that if it's an item that that needs to go to you or Commissioner Tyson or Ammons with economic development, <coughs> then mm -hmm. it can just be on the appropriate committee. I, like I mean, I did you just the, say that I you think, agreed to? I think that the appropriate committee, of course. I think that the appropriate committee, if, if if it's not done this way, it should be fine. Okay, so yeah. can we can we make a motion that it, it goes on the finance? Second. 
We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. I'm not exactly sure what just happened. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> commissioner or not. I thought Does we had something you? else on here too. Commissioner no, not. no. We can, what we did, we just moved these two items. From my agenda to the final. No, that, no, 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 that, that's, not, just, no that's, that's not what, that's uh, not, that's not that's what, what I was saying, Mr. President. All right. What I was saying, what I, the, the motion that was on the floor that I was saying clearly says <clears throat> all budgeted items, as I understood it, would then be presented by the finance committee chairman. Is that not what we just voted on? We no. We talked about each each item in that particular list of items that, right. that the committee <laughs> would be instead of coming from the commit from the commission presidents, it would come through finance. That's what clearly was everyone was voting on. Mm -hmm. Except for Steve, he didn't know. I didn't know. So, so, so no, anything I mean, that <laughs> would be on that list that that was part of that budget would now not come through the president's office. It would come through the finance chair. Is that what we just voted That's on? That's what we just voted on. Okay, and, yeah. and then, so what was the vote count? Okay. It's all good. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. All right. Steve, okay. it voted out. Commissioners, did the, may I make your motion and resolution was to direct the county manager to place those items on finance. Is that correct? That's correct. Right. correct. Okay. I like that budget motion. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, see, there you go. All right. All right. So, <coughs> and and it was, it, with, was with, unanimous, with, with the exception of one and two before us. Or, <laughs> I mean, I'm saying that there was was, was, or, was or the count merely unanimous. Report. It was. Yes. I'm, no, I'm asking. I'm not taking. It, it I'm was. talking to her. So right. you I'm can't. Up, I'm I don't know why you like you like my conversations. He was a great way. He was on our side. No, I got it. Side. I just wanted to ask her, was it you next, Mr. Chair? It was. All right. I, I, I I'm going to, I'm going to just uh, had a question. defer these two items to the <coughs> finance, uh, and I have one item left. Resolution to adopt the 2019 2020 County Commissioner meeting. Cool. Uh, yeah. Move and second. I'll say aye. Aye. Uh, uh, Mr. Wright. I haven't seen him. You're the man. All right, purchase reports. Do I have any questions on one, two, three, four, or five? Hold on. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Yeah. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Budget Management Office. I've got multiple staff development items, several items. I have a motion. The item? Yeah. A motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, Board of Registrars, Barry, you still with us? Barry is moving a polling um, place precinct. Um, it's the Hillview Fire Station is moving to the Forest Hill Fire Station. Move the item. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Developmental Services, Z 2019 027, Bagley Church of God. This first case is a request to go from A1 Agriculture to Institutional One Zone for compliance for a church. They want to locate a mobile home for a parsonage and uh, they just need to come to compliance. Recognize yeah. it for approval by the plan. Have a motion. I'll say. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All right. Z 2019 028 Brookwood Baptist Church. This is a property in Secret Hollow Road, south of uh, Liberty Park. Uh, the property is currently zoned institutional because it did belong to a church. They're selling the property and uh, they want to rezone to A1 Agriculture to have four lots. The plan, there was no opposition to this. The Planning Commission was concerned about its proximity to uh, Liberty Park, though, and are limiting the number of animals by covenant or asking to limit the number of animals by covenant, even though these are very large lots, they're two acre plus lots. They just want to make sure there's no conflict with the residences involved. 2019 Do I have a motion? I have a motion? I'll second. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 2019 This is a property at the entrance to the Jeff Met Industrial Park in McCullough. 
It's currently a church property. It's zoned institutional one. The uh, owner of the gas station across the street from this has purchased the property and wants to uh, rezone it for commercial purposes. He doesn't have a specific use at this time. He would like to just use the existing church building to rent out for a commercial purpose. Uh, the planning commission <coughs> was concerned about the quality of the, the property being as it is the entrance to the industrial park and they have asked for a covenant that would allow them approval of any additional or, uh, improvements in the future whenever this is converted to something else. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 2019-003. That is a resolution of acknowledgement or a uh, case that has already changed <coughs> zoning. Do you have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Hey, Lashonda, say second. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. All right. General Services, <laughs> Alabama Power LED Lighting Project. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Smith, yes, sir. you got a you got a project? Alabama Power LED. Upgrade project for Family Core. Okay. I'm moving. Ah, uh, second. <laughs> All in favor? Uh -huh. Tell the to stick me a bag of Let's try to say aye. 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 <laughs> Long as Joe said aye. Right. Now, I have a couple of items. Number one, the Alabama <laughs> Agriculture and Mechanical University. I know, I got, I'll come back to the, do that. You, you want to wait until Jim is here so we can do the honors? Okay, let me go to uh, my last thing is that uh, World Games resolution is the this payment for this year? Correct. All right. <clears throat> payment uh, to the World Games. I have a motion. Move the item. Move in. I have a motion and a motion. So I'll second. have a, a second out of that yeah. first motion, and then we'll do the first motion to the second she motion, and I'll say <laughs> all in favor. All right. All right. All right. All right. Where were we at? We, we have an interview out there, there or something? Must be a TV yeah. camera somewhere. Close by. Tell them we're trying to get some funding. That was your 2 a.m. motion. What? That was your 2 a.m. motion. Right? Yeah, was your two motion right? <laughs> no, I'm trying to get some I'm just trying to get, 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 get some. Yeah, I didn't pass them. I didn't pass them. Did y'all pass them? No, I don't think so. I heard you start reading something about the I know, that's what I'm trying to get. Okay. Get, get, them out, get them off the TV here for a minute. All right. You want to capitalize the definition, right? All right. Where's Jim? All I hear is both. Oh, okay. Okay, well, just wait one more minute. I hear you. Come on, right. Jamie. We've been have waiting a, on you. Have a motion. Welcome Commission home. Grant, Alabama A&M. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, funds to assist in the promotion of the continuation of the Magic City Classic. Do I have a motion? Walk on the floor. I have a motion. Wait, Do I have wait, a hold second? on. Do you want to read it again? I'm just on both of them, right? Um, I'm taking two at once. I'm taking one. item one. One at a time. Uh, <laughs> I, hey, I, I feel your pain over here. I'm, I'm, I'm squirming myself. I, I have a motion and a second on the commission grant to Alabama A and M. Good. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? So that was unanimous. That's what it sounded like. All me. right. 2020 commission grant Alabama State yeah, University on. funds to assist in the promotion of the okay. continuation of the Magic City Classic. Do I have a motion? Move that. I have a motion. And I have a second, right, Mr. Tyson? Who? This is for Alabama State. For Alabama State, on the All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Well, that, that. I, 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 can, I, can I have one more? Are we finished? Well, what, 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 what you we could be. I, I want to. 
I, wanted, I thought your um, foot was hurt. I, 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 I got to go to But I wanted to, I went into the districts. I went into uh, uh, Commissioner Stevens and Commissioner Allen's district. And we've been doing just a little um, things in there with dealing with the classic. And in the, in the citizens are so appreciated from both of y'all. Uh, we have just uh, maybe about three more right, areas of uh, peace to go into. Oh. I just want you to know that they do really appreciate it. We have pictures and videos and everything. To we're going to get challenged to put together. <laughs> And while we added to uh, I have a, I have, I have, I'm not finished with my report. Oh, well, I, do. I was just going to say, as it relates to that, um, I got a water reclamation <laughs> apprentice facility operator. No, I, I got to have a presentation. You want to have a presentation? I first. have a presentation on my agenda. I'm so used to the reclamation. But I, I, I wanted to say on to that just to say that, Mr. President, and to all commissioners, uh, I know that Bruno Vincent has been writing when they like for all of us to be a part of the check presentation so i hope that you all will, will make your sales available uh, i think it's going to be a fantastic <coughs> and generate a lot of economic development to our county and i would like for us to do a census video Helen, if you can catch us right after the meeting right quick to where we can present it to our uh, bruno event team because we have over four hundred thousand people out there and this is a chance for us to actually make people understand how important it is since the people she can get a, just a little bite of each one of the commissioners uh president well we can get it shown at the uh at the gap please all right human resources I, hey, Joe, why would we do that i think that I would suggest, why don't you partner with the sheriff? He has a PSA. I know. I've well, already talked to him. All right. So, I'm so, top so you do that. So if you're on top of that, that gives you, he gets PSA or okay. mm -hmm. And work, work out great. I'm so good. Okay. Presentation by Human Resources. Hey, good, <laughs> good bless your heart for good running. Uh, Commissioners, I want to introduce you all to a good program to build by good county employees. And it's solving a real big problem that we've had. And we'll start out with Margaret with Environmental Services. And, and then we have Lowe and Mark in the HR department who work together. And I, and I blame him for not moving y'all up to the agenda. You know, we just last. texted him next time. Anybody need a cookie? A cracker? <laughs> no, we just need an intermission of some sort here for long. I think I need pain pills. A little sugar. All right, here we go. I'll give him cream. I <laughs> All right, so just to introduce myself, I'm Margaret Tanner, I'm Deputy Director with Environmental Services. I'm over our Water Reclamation Division, which includes our nine treatment plants. Um, okay. All right, so um, just to kind of give you a quick overview of what we're going to talk about, I mean, this has been a really great joint partnership between environmental services, which is our user department, and human resources. Um, recruiting has done a fantastic job. Testing helped us out a lot with getting all the apprentices tested and, and selected and then selection. And of course, Mark Crenshaw who came up with all the uh, kind of typing up of everything and putting all the whole program together from all the different ideas we got so we could actually move forward with this. All right, so just, just to kind of set a little bit of background here, um, this is a national, what water reclamation is facing, what ESC is facing is a national problem. There are approximately 210 unique water sector jobs. Yeah. Wastewater is a small part of that, probably, well, not a small, but a, 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 only a part of that. And um, for, for us, you know, that we're looking at nationally about 50% of the workforce retired in the next five years. And that basically comes down to when the Clean Water Act was promulgated in 1972, there was a 12 to 4, 16 year period where every municipality had to come in compliance with that federal law. And um, so during that time, municipalities hired employees. So by, by about the mid 80s, pretty much everyone was hired. Now we're about 30 years later, everyone's retiring because most municipalities at that time had pensions. And so moving forward to now, I mean, we're, we're losing that original workforce. I mean, it's been a small part of, of the program has been bringing new people in over the years. It just hasn't been a big push on that across the country. And now every, everybody's facing the same dilemma. Okay. 
Um, so for ESD, I mean, we have currently 42 budgeted operator positions. That's as about as lean as we can go on budgeted positions. It, it's actually pretty lean. Causes us a little bit of, you know, in the future. But 60, right now, 67% of those operator positions are vacant. And that's pretty scary when you think we have nine frequent plants. We handle about 100 million gallons of sewage on a regular basis a day. And during wet weather, it can be a lot more than that. It could almost be triple that. <coughs> um, and that of those 67 positions, of the 33% of those employees that are actually, those positions that are actually filled, we're going to lose approximately 60% in the next five years, which leaves us about six certified operators, which is impossible for us to adequately manage our system under those conditions. So, um, and again, the workforce of yesterday is not the workforce we need for tomorrow. We need a highly educated, more well-rounded workforce than what we've had. It's more than flipping a valve. It's more than just, you know, turning a switch. You've got to have an engineering background. You've got to have a science background, a math background. Um, you, you actually need to learn chemistry and physics and a whole bunch of disciplines to be able to successfully become an operator in today's world. Um, so this all stems, Alabama recently in the last few years changed their program from kind of an Alabama generated test to, a to, to one that meets more than national standards across the country. Uh, 37, 38, approximately 37, 38 states use this same criteria and it's re referred to as the need to know criteria. And it actually sets a national testing type criteria, which makes the licenses people get portable from state to state, which is um, desirable for the workforce and, and it leads to a better, better class of employees. Um, however, that test is difficult. There's a lot to it. There's a lot of math. You got to know the physics. You got to know the science behind what you're doing. You can't. It, it's you know you can't just go in there and, and read a couple couple of pages of stuff and go in and pass this test. The pass rate for the grade four certification, which is the highest level of certification, which we require at our grade four facilities, which is Village, Valley, Cahaba, and Five Mile, um, there's only about a 30% pass rate. And that varies a little bit. At the time we did this slide, it was 33%. Talking with the state just last week, it's down to 28%. So it averages around that 30% mark of passing. And that's any time anyone takes it. Now, to pass this test, almost everybody takes it more than once. Not everyone, but you know, it's a good percentage of people have to take it multiple times. Um, for the lower certification levels, that the, the test, the passing goes up because the material is not quite as rigorous. All right. So um, again, this program was designed for us to be able to hire our own and build our own workforce because those, the, these candidates don't exist on the open market. Again, everyone's retiring. The people that are trained are retiring. And then they also don't contain the skill set we really are looking for. As we increase automation and we go more and more into computer-based systems, then we need people who can handle those programs. And, and it's surprising how many people just don't want to ever touch a computer out there that are still working. All right. Alright, so I'm going to turn it over to um, Lauren. Lauren. <laughs> Sorry, I almost said Lauren, I knew that was on my head. Hello, Lauren. Same thing. Uh, good morning. My name is Lauren Lauren. I work in the Human Resources Department uh, in the Strategic Relationship Management Division. We are four recruiters and an admin uh, analyst who uh, support this program and recruit for this program. So just like Margaret, said this program was built because we needed to build our own pipeline of qualified and certified operators. Um, it was hard to go out and find the talent of individuals who were already certified because they're already working or they're, they're sitting there um, in their current roles or they're getting ready to retire. So we had to build this program in order to fulfill the future needs of our um, environmental services operator positions. So we've done various recruitment outreach and recruitment methods to um, ensure that we have the quality of candidates that we have and to just bring awareness to the program. So some of these things that we've done, we've built relationships with different community organizations in the area. We um, promoted and branded in various ways in social media accounts and social media outlets. Um, we've targeted certain veterans coming out of um, or transitioning into the, the, the uh, military or the civilian workforce. Um, we've also you know, outreached to various um, employment agencies 
for those individuals who may be unemployed and they're looking for a career change or something different. Uh, we've also aligned our efforts with those organizations who support job seekers in finding employment. Uh, so this is a quick video that we um, put together along with Helen Hayes um, that shows some of our apprentices, current apprentices, share their experiences with, um, about the program. <coughs> a plant tour, and a basic math test. Out of those people, we currently have 28 apprentices in our program right now for the county. Uh, the uh, second group actually started uh, last month, in the last month. Not only that, uh, we have been fortunate that our program is not recognized with the state of Alabama. Uh, we partner with uh, Dr. Hamilton's team, and uh, we now have access to some uh, to to grant funding for our for our program. Um, um, so that's a big big deal. This month and uh, part of last month, our current group has been testing, going through their grade two test. Uh, out of the uh, first group, ten of them. Started. Six of them have actually uh, will be finished testing oh, in uh, November, and one has already passed the grade two exam. We're very, very proud of her. Uh, not only with this program, we are also allowing current ESD employees who are not apprentices to actually go through the classwork as well. And we have ten of those individuals who actually went through the classes, and five of those will be testing for their certifications over this next month. 
what questions do we have? No, but I have a comment. Mr. Patelis, Justin, when we have presentations, this was an excellent presentation, but it got lost in all this stuff we've been through for two and a half hours. These people worked hard on that because you could tell the way it's put together. So I mean, it's a good thing. Presented. Well presented. So let's see if we can move these presentations because I didn't really realize, you know, I've kind of been out of it. Well, you know, just let's let's put that up to the front, like we did Dr. Watts and those guys, and let's try to limit the number of presentations. If we get over two, then let let everybody know. Is that okay with everybody? I mean, that's just this is common courtesy. This was good, but this was lost in the shuffle. So can we show it again? Right now? No, I'm talking about when we'll be present. Let me also say this too. Uh, uh, to everyone here, we did, um, our office did a presentation as it relates to apprenticeship with water reclamation and we took um, something that people don't want to talk about, stinky water, and, and made it look pretty. There's a marketing word, but you know it may not be acceptable in this setting, but I will say this, that it, this part of Jefferson County is more vital then I think we know and we probably have done you all a disservice this morning uh, which is the only reason why I was asking Mr. President if we could represent it. I know David you try to do a great job uh, of making sure that those apprenticeships are known you helped us to do that video uh, but I will tell you I went out uh, Jacob and I went out to the water reclamation plant and I was fascinated with how we make dirty water clean, yeah. um, just looking down into it. And I think that uh, since it is, we talk about job creations all the time, uh, this is something that we can actually uh, not only present, but be made available to the public. This is something we have oversight of. And, uh, and Ms. President, if we can, uh, at our next meeting, uh, committee meeting, if we all can commit now to having this presentation brought before us and then uh, at the top of the agenda. We'll do it. We'll yeah. do it. Oh, Thank you do so it. Yeah. Can, can I suggest we move it to the second one in November because then we should have test results. That would be great. Yeah, yeah. there's That'd a be lot of great. pressure. And yeah, we'll tell them they have to do well. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that well was, let's just say okay. it, whether it is, is completed or not, okay. at least everyone will know. Uh, and in the month of Thanksgiving, we can show our thankfulness to your department for what you all have But But thank, that was good. I mean, and that was, that's been such a big <coughs> issue with the federal consent decree we're under was that subject right there and it got lost. So let's redo it. We'll do it, we'll do it in November. That'd be good. And, and we will definitely put the programs in front. And that's then good. we're going to see a big pass rate. I hope so. <laughs> thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry to thank get you. you. Thank you, David. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's my report. We're gone. If I can get up, walk. <laughs>